So this is my method for loading and passing a suture needle. Now the suture itself, let's go over a few points on this. The suture itself comes in a pack, maybe looks something like this. When it does, half of the needle is exposed and half the needle is actually protected under the cardboard and the paper here. Coming out of the back end of the needle is the suture itself. That's the thread that comes out of the back end of the needle. In the back end of the needle, there's actually a little hole where the manufacturer has taken the thread, the suture itself, pushed it into that hole, and then clamped down on the metal around that so it grabs onto the suture and holds it tight in place. So that back edge, that's called a swedge, or a swedged end of the suture needle. That's the area we want to avoid because we don't want to mess up with that swedge, that clamping down, that holding on of the suture itself. So we want to stay away from that when we grab the suture needle. So we're going to grab the needle at about one quarter to one third of the way around that needle. Now how do we find one quarter to one third of the way around? Well again, half of the needle is visible, half of it is hidden under the paper. So this right here would be the halfway point. So one quarter would be about halfway through that. So it'd be right about there. So anywhere in this area is a good place to grab the needle with the needle driver, the needle holders. So if the packet is on the table, I'm gonna come straight down at it grabbing at again that quarter to a third of the way around the needle and clamping on at that point. If I'm holding the packet into my hand, again, I'm gonna come in at a 90 degree angle from that packet, come straight in and clamp onto the needle. From there, I can twist and pull the rest of the needle out of the packet and pull the suture out of the packet. A well-loaded needle is not going to be right at the tip of the needle carrier, the needle drivers. It's actually going to be loaded just about a millimeter or so below the tip of the needle driver. So there's going to be just about a millimeter of the needle driver sticking up above the needle itself. When you latch it, you're going to latch it to the first ratchet on the needle driver. You're not going to clamp way down because then the surgeon's going to have trouble getting it off of there. So you're just going to latch it to that first latch, that first ratchet point. And then to pass the needle, you're going to have to turn it around and you're going to hold it this way. You're going to hold it by the box lock of the needle driver. Now the box lock is the area where the two sides of the needle driver come together in this nice little box here. So that's where I'm going to put my thumb and my index finger, right on the box lock itself. So when I'm holding this by the box lock, the needle is at the top and the rings are at the bottom. So with the rings dangling down to the bottom, this is the safe way of holding the needle because the needle is at the top and it is always visible. It's not hidden by my hand in any way. And when I go to pass it, I'm gonna take it and tilt it slightly, maybe at about a 45 degree angle, and it's that angle that I'm gonna to use to snap it into the surgeon's hand. So when it comes time to pass the suture to your surgeon, again, you're holding it at the box lock tilting the ring slightly towards the surgeon, and you're gonna place it in her hand, but you're gonna snap it into her hand, and you're gonna do so like this. So you're going to, instead of bringing it and swinging it into her hand, you're going to hold it here, and then you're gonna snap. And what that does, that actually triggers a grip reflex in her hand, so that she's gonna immediately want to grip on to those rings. So that's what the reason for that snap. It triggers that reflex and she immediately wants to grab it. Now notice I didn't swing in like this because the needle's now moving a whole lot. But if I just snap it, that needle hasn't moved very much and we're able to keep an eye on it. And that's a much safer way of doing that. While you're passing that to her, once I have it in her hand, I'm gonna control the, the thread, control the suture itself and make sure it goes over the back of her hand. Controlling the suture is very important because it's very easy for the suture to fall down over the edge of the table and then become contaminated. So you really wanna make sure you're controlling that suture as you pass it over the back of her hand. Now to make sure I've oriented the needle properly, when I put it in her hand, the needle is pointed at her heart. Notice how it's pointed inward and upward towards her heart. It's not pointed away towards her shoulder. That's the way I know that the needle is oriented properly. Now, if I had to pass it to her left hand, I would then grab the needle on the longer side. I'm going to release that one lock, but I'm not going to release tension on the needle. I'm still going to put tension on there so it's still holding the needle in place. And with that tension on there, I'm going to twist the needle over 180 degrees. Up. 
I'm still holding, putting that tension on there. I'm still holding that needle. I haven't released the needle in any way. I'm going to now ratchet to that first lock. Again, just one click. And I'm ready to hand to her left hand. Now, in this case, I can do it with one hand because I'm controlling the thread, controlling the suture on the back of this hand. I can go and snap it into her hand and drape the suture over the back of her hand. With the needle flipped over, but in her left hand, the needle is now still pointed at her heart, not at her shoulder. Now, as soon as you receive the needle back from the surgeon, assuming the surgeon is not going to use this particular needle again, and that's very rare that that would happen, you're going to take the needle and you're going to place it into your needle book into one of the numbered spots on the foam. These numbers are going to help you count your needles at the end of the case.